What's going on, Broncos country? Coming up on today's show, we're going to check out Daniel Jeremiah's first mock draft, see who he had Denver selecting, and then Mel Kuyper released a new big board. And with the Broncos having the 12th overall pick, I wanted to see who was at the top of his list that Denver could end up drafting. But let's get into NFL.com from Daniel Jeremiah's first mock draft for 2024. Starting off with the Bears selecting Caleb Williams, no surprise. Drake May, Jaden Daniels follow suit. Now that is noteworthy because Jaden Daniels going number three does give an indication that he's not going to fall maybe to the Broncos at number 12. Number four is Marvin Harrison. Number five is Roma Junze. Number six is Malik Neighbors. Number seven is Joe Alt. And moving on here to number eight, Dallas Turner going to the Falcons. Jared Verse to the Bears. The Jets pick up an offensive lineman that inevitably will get hurt his rookie season. And now we land at the Broncos at number 12. After the Vikings went defensive line with Byron Murphy, Denver went cornerback. Carry on Arnold out of Alabama. Now, I don't know if you guys operate the same way I operate when I look at mock drafts, which is I always scroll down to my team, see who they had them taking, and then I go back to the first overall pick and look at all the other mock drafts. So when I saw that uh, Daniel Jeremiah had the Broncos going with Terrion Arnold, I also realized that Dane Brugler just a week ago had Denver going with Terrion Arnold. Now, I don't think this is an absolute lock by any means. It's still January. We have a long ways to go. But if you do want maybe a, a concrete-ish takeaway from Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugler, both of the top NFL mock draft guys out there, selecting the same player for the Broncos, it might be more of a reflection of what position Denver could be going with. And then they'll figure out which player is at the top of their cornerback cornerback uh, big board when April rolls around. Because Daniel Jeremiah, to begin his mock draft, actually wrote this. I tend to base my mock drafts on what I'm hearing around the league, whereas my top 50 prospect rankings reflect what I'm seeing during my own evaluations. And that's the exact same thing Dane Brugler said. So we have Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugler hearing that Denver could be looking at a cornerback in the first round as opposed to a quarterback. Now, before we talk about whether or not it's a good decision to go corner over quarter, let's talk about Terrion Arnold again, because the six-foot corner for the Alabama Crimson Tide, in my eyes, was their number one cornerback this year. He had five interceptions. That led the team. He excels as an outside corner with above-average skill set and run-stopping abilities. Now, I don't think this cornerback draft class this year is all that special. Looking at it, I don't think we're going to see a single corner go in the top 10. And that might be a first since, I think, 2019. I mean, you think about the last couple of draft classes, Devin Witherspoon, you had Derek Stingley, Sauce Gardner, Jeff Okuda. I'm not quite sure if we're going to see one of those guys go in the top 10. Now, here's what Jeremiah had to say on Terry on Arnold. I think Arnold could go as high as fifth overall. He's the best cornerback in this draft, and he would pair with Pat Sertan the second to give the Broncos one of the best cornerback tandems in the league, if not the best. Now, as much as I would prefer a quarterback in round one, by no means do I just want to pick a quarterback just for the sake of picking a quarterback. Do the Broncos need a quarterback? Yes, absolutely. But if you find yourself in a Paxton Lynch situation again where you pick a QB just because you want to pick a QB, well, let's run through what's going to happen after that. That QB could very well suck, right? He had no business going in the first round, but because you were just hell-bent on picking a quarterback, all of a sudden you go into 2025, 2026, still needing a quarterback and still needing help elsewhere on your roster. So if you don't think, and I'm talking to Sean and George right now, if you don't think a quarterback when you're on the clock at number 12 overall, is worthy of going in round one, then don't pick a quarterback. Help the rest of your roster. Because quarterback is not the only need for this Broncos team. They need another corner badly. And so if you think Terrion Arnold can be a seven, eight-year starter in this league and pair nicely with Pat Sertan and form a no-fly zone in Denver at mile high, do that and we'll figure out the quarterback position maybe another year. 
But I'm not on board with just picking a QB because you need a quarterback. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be like a lot of other teams that pick a quarterback in round one. You'll be in the exact same spot in a few seasons, and you're still going to need another corner. So let me know. What position should Denver draft first? If Jaden Daniels falls to you at 12, you go take it and you run. If you come back from the combine and you love what you saw out of Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy and the medicals check out on J.J. McCarthy uh, on uh, Michael Penix Jr., then we can have a discussion about one of those guys being the 12th overall pick. But if Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy underwhelm at the combine and you get sketchy reports on Michael Penix's two torn ACLs, don't just rush into picking a quarterback. Go take the best player available at whatever your biggest need is following free agency. Now, Daniel Jeremiah is one of my favorite mock drafters out there. Him and Dane Brugger are probably one and two. I do love looking at previous mock drafts of these guys to see how accurate they are. So this time last year in 2023, Daniel Jeremiah's first mock draft, he had 23 of the 31 players actually go round one. Ignore anyone ever going to the right team because that never happens this early on. Now, by April, he actually have a couple of teams and players spot on exactly. But you can see that this early on, there is still some room for improvement. But at the end of the day, it's still a crap shot. Am I going to look at it? Am I going to look at mock drafts religiously? Absolutely. But don't take them as the gospel, right? We still have a long ways to go and plenty more big events this offseason to figure out who's going to go round one. Now, up next on the show, we're going to look at Mel Kuyper's new big board, see who he has ranked in his top 25 because the Broncos finally having a first-round pick since they went with Pat Sertan in 2021. They will definitely be looking at some of the biggest names on this big board. Now, before we get into that, I do want to highlight our sponsor today, which is Prize Picks. Thanks to Prize Picks, I had a blast this football season making money on awful football games brought to you by the New York Jets most softly. But with prize picks, you can stay locked in on the playoff games, NBA as well. And all you do is pick two to six players, choose more or less on their projected stats, and you could turn $10 into $250. Now, here are my selections for the divisional round. I'm taking the less on Jordan Love. The Packers had their moment of fame against the Cowboys, but I think they come crashing down to earth against a well-rested 49ers team. I like the more on George Kittle for that exact reason. And then I like the more on David Montgomery's rushing yards because I just think we're on a collision course for Lions 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Now, if you like my selections, you can ride with me or you can fade me if you think I'm a big dumb-dumb, but just make sure you do it at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. And when you do that, you're going to get a first-time deposit match up to $100. Now, I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's start off Mel Kuyper's big board with one through five. None of these guys you should get attached to too much unless the Broncos make a blockbuster move to move up, and I don't think that's going to happen. But Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Drake May, Jaden Daniels at number four, the more hype we give around Jaden Daniels, unfortunately, the less probability that he is available for the Broncos even after the top five. Like I could see Denver trading up a couple of spots if he starts to slip like Justin Fields did a few years ago, but I don't think we're going to see Daniels far, fall far from number five overall. Romer Dunze comes in at uh, number five. Malik Neighbors at six. Joe Alt at seven. Brock Bowers at eight. Olu Fashanu at nine. And Dallas Turner at ten. Now, we still have a lot of offseason to get through, and the Broncos' needs may very well change. Like, if they trade Jerry Judy or they move on from Cortland Sutton, all of a sudden Malik Neighbors and all those guys are going to look very enticing. But if they keep Garrett Bowles and they keep all their wide receivers, I don't think they go wide receiver or offensive line around one. My dream pick for Denver is Brock Bowers. I think he is, and we hear this every single year, but I actually think he is the next Gronk. Every single year we are told this is the next Gronk, but this one's different. Brock Bowers has been the best tight end in college football for two years. It's very difficult in college football to be the best at your position for two straight seasons. And he's done it, and it hasn't even been a close competition. So if Brock Bowers is somehow available to Denver, 
at number 12 overall. I know tight end is not a position you see very often go early in round one, but with the issues the Broncos have a tight end, with Adam Trotman being a free agent, and with Greg Dulcich being unreliable, how could you pass on a generational tight end? Now, a sneaky pick to watch for is Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama. I'm not over the moon on Dallas Turner. So he lined up opposite from Will Anderson, a third overall pick by the Texans last year, and he was vastly outproduced and overshadowed by Will Anderson. And that's going to happen because Will Anderson was a generational talent. But Dallas Turner this year still put up respectable numbers, 10 sacks, 53 tackles. But part of me wonders, is he going so early because he's Alabama's leading edge rusher? Like, no offense to Turner, but if he was a 10-sack guy from NC State, random Bradley Chubb reference, would he still be a top-10 player? I'm not so sure on Dallas Turner being all that, and I can't wait to see more from him throughout the Combine and the Senior Bowl and all that good stuff. Okay, moving on to five more players from Mel Kuyper's big board. Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU, our sweet unicorn, Cooper DeJohn, the cornerback out of Iowa. You know, Sean Payton likes his white DB, so this could be getting them all together. Keon Coleman, pass, Nate Wiggins, iffy. But Cooper DeJohn's the interesting one because remember how Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugger both had the Broncos going cornerback? So maybe they are hearing Denver likes corner. And then they're going to connect the dots the rest of the way going, all right, they want to go corner. Well, we think Terion Arnold is the best cornerback in this class, so naturally that could make some sense. But here we've got Mel Kuyper saying Cooper is the number one cornerback in this class. So if he truly is and Denver wants to go corner, maybe the Broncos are not going to be the only team to have one white cornerback. They could have two unicorns on their defense. All right, let's look at the rest of Mel Kuyper's big board here. Uh, the edge rusher from UCLA, Latou, he's awesome. Michael Penix coming in at 17. That's interesting. I'll tell you why in a moment. I'm a big fan of Jared Verse. Uh, we got some offensive linemen coming in. I don't think the Broncos go offensive line around one unless they were to move on from Garrett Bowles. Uh, we got some other guys in the trenches coming in here. I'm a big fan of... Jerzon Newton, the defensive tackle out of Illinois, especially with how bad Denver's run defense was last year. If they're unable to pick up some defensive tackles in free agency, keep an eye on Newton to the Broncos in April. Now, Michael Penix is maybe the most interesting name on screen there because not only is he just a quarterback, but he comes with several mixed reviews. And I think Michael Penix might be this year's Will Levin, where every single year, Mock draft experts and gurus, guys that make a living off of this, they have to create some excitement around the draft. And there is nothing that moves the needle more than quarterbacks. And last year, after looking at all these mock drafts from last year to see how accurate or mostly inaccurate the mock drafts were, one constant was there. Will Levis in the top 10. Top 10. Not just first round. I saw some guys have him taken second overall. I had some people see Will Levis go before C.J. Stroud. So, what ended up happening? Will Levis fell to round two. Now, could Michael Penix be this year's Will Levis? I think it could be him, could be Bo Nix, could be J.J. McCarthy. But one of those three quarterbacks is not going to go round one. And one of those three quarterbacks, or all three quarterbacks, are going to be heavily mocked to go in the first round. And that may very well be Michael Penix this year. Now, who is your dream pick for Denver at number 12? I got bad news. If, if you, if, maybe you should sit, sit, sit down for this. Uh, Caleb Williams is not falling to Denver at number 12. I know. So who is your dream draft pick for the Broncos at number 12 overall within some level of reason? All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and your weekend. We are going to sign off and see you all later. Mm -hmm.